Hi, I'm Philip. Welcome to the video course where you will build a code image generator. If you've never heard of a code image generator, let me pitch the idea for you. If you're active on social media, you know that images and videos are popular forms of content. But as a programmer, you mainly work with text. So sharing the content that you create on a daily basis may not seem intuitive. That's where a code image generator can come in handy for you. With a code image generator, you can create a nice looking image of your code snippets. That way you can share code without worrying about formatting, different syntax highlighting, or character count limitations. While following along with this video course, you will build a code image generator. And to be a bit more precise, you will create a Flask web app that connects and styles templates, and then you will beautify the code with pigments, and you use Playwright to create the images. Sounds fun? Let's get started. The code editor I'm using is VS Code, but you basically can follow along with any code editor of your choice. I'm currently having the terminal open, where I will start with the project. I already navigated to my project folder, and one of the first steps you usually want to do when creating a new Python project is creating a virtual environment. That way you can make sure all the packages that you install are only installed for this project and not system-wide. To create a virtual environment, you'll use the venv module that Python comes with, and the command is python-m venv venv. The second venv is the name of my virtual environment. You can basically name it any way you want, but I like it to be straightforward and be just venv. Once I hit enter, you see on the left side that there is a new folder created named venv. That's the virtual environment. To actually use it, you need to activate it. So on macOS, it's source venv slash bin slash activate. On Linux, it's exactly the same command. And on Windows, you will use venv scripts activate. You can verify that the virtual environment activated if you see the virtual env's name in parentheses on the left of your prompt. Now that the virtual environment is there and activated, I will install the packages that you need for this project. And that's Flask, Pigments, and Playwright. You can install all three packages in one command using python-m pip install Flask, Pigments, and Playwright. So that's P-L-A-Y-W-R-I-G-H-T <laughs> to work with my German accent, so you know what I'm typing there. And all three packages separated by a space. And once you hit Enter, then all the packages are installed in one go. As you saw, I didn't specify any version numbers for those packages. So I'm currently using the up-to-date versions as the day of this recording. But since you're watching this course sometime in the future, the versions might have changed. So I will freeze the packages versions in a requirements.txt file. And you can use this requirements.txt file that you can find in the supporting materials to download exactly the versions I'm using in this course. So you can follow along and you can be sure the code works exactly as you see it on the screen. To freeze packages in a requirements.txt file, you type python-m pip freeze and then a greater than sign, and then a file name. In this case, requirements.txt. If you want to use the requirements file from the supporting materials, the command that you will use is python-m pip install dash r, and then you add the requirements.txt file as the argument. And once you hit enter, you will see that the requirements are already satisfied for me. But for you, you will then install exactly the versions from this video course. And with the packages in place, there is actually one important step that you need to do in order to work with Playwright later. And that's to install the headless browsers. So inside your virtual environment, type python-m Playwright and then install. When you press enter, then Playwright installs the required browsers for you. This might take a while, so I'll ask my video editor to speed up this process. Using Playwright install installs the latest versions of Chromium, Firefox, and WebKit. These are basically similar to the browsers that you're using to explore the web. The main difference here is 
that these browsers are headless in Playwright. That means that they don't have a graphical user interface, but instead Playwright uses this to run them in the background. And you can control those browsers programmatically, and that's what you will do in this project. The foundation of your code image generator is a Flask web application that will live in an app.py file. Go ahead and create the file, and then open it in your editor. In app.py, you first need to import the Flask class from Flask. So from lowercase Flask, import uppercase Flask. Then create a variable named app and instantiate the Flask class with the argument dunder name. That's two underscores, name and two underscores. That's the unique identifier of your module. And this is a convenient way of giving your Flask app a name which Flask needs to work. Then you need to create a route for your app, and you do this by using a decorated function, at app, that's your Flask app, routes, and then as an argument, you can use the slash. So that's the root route. So root with double O and route with OU. In other words, that's the homepage. The function you can basically name any way you want. Here I'm using code because Basically, when we visit our web page, I want to see the code later on. So I name this function code, and this function needs to return some HTML. For now, the HTML is not so important, so let's just use an h1 tag and let's say hello inside the tag, close the tag, and save the file. So now when you start the Flask server and you visit the root route, then the hello headline will be served to you. Let's try this out. Open a terminal, make sure that your virtual environment is activated, and then run Flask by using python-m flask, and then the command run. So the full command is python-m flask run. That works because you named your Python file app.py. So if you would name your Python file differently, you would have to have an dash dash app flag, but with the app.py file, you can use this basic command. Once you hit enter, the development server of Flask starts. And there you will see an IP address that you need to copy and open in the browser. For me, that's 127.0.0.1 colon 5000. That's the port. For you, it should be the same, but if there is another URL showing on your end, use the one on your end, of course. If you're using VS Code, you can start the command palette and look for simple browser show and paste the URL there. And then a new browser window inside VS Code opens with our hello headline. But of course, you can also open another browser on your system and paste the URL there. Visually, there is not much happening so far, but the groundwork is done. And I think that's pretty amazing. You've just created a Flask server and you're serving your first website. If you want, you can play around with the HTML code in the code function. If you play around, make sure to later have an h1 tag in the return string again, because that's what you need to have in the next lesson where you'll start working with Playwright. Your code for Playwright will live in a file named Utils. Create the file and open it in your editor. In the utils.py file, you first need to import the sync Playwright function from the sync API module of the Playwright package. Once you've imported the sync Playwright function, create a new function in the utils.py file named take screenshot. This function should take one argument so define a parameter named URL, because that will be the URL of which Playwright should take a screenshot from. Inside the take screenshot function, create a context manager with the sync Playwright function and use Playwright as its variable name. As usual, the context manager starts with a with, and it's important that you write sync Playwright with the parentheses at the end in order to call the function as Playwright. Inside the context manager, create a browser engine first. In my case, I will use WebKit. Then you need to create a browser with this engine and launch it. 
once you have the browser launched, you need to create a new browser context. You can think of the browser context as kind of like a browser window. And you create this new context with the new context method of the browser object. Then inside this context, you create a new page. You can think of it like opening a tab in your browser. Once you've defined the page, you need to navigate to this page. You can do so by calling the goTo method, and here you'll use the URL parameter for it. So later you will call the take screenshot function with a URL, and then Playwright will create a headless browser that visits this URL. So far in this code, the browser is basically on the page, and now you can interact with this page. For example, locating an element of the page. You can locate elements on a page with the locator method of page, and there you need to pass in an identifier, for example, an HTML tag. And since you use an H1 tag for the Flask app, you can try locating the H1. So pass in a string that just says H1. No brackets around it, just a string H1. To later get feedback if this location worked, let's print the text content of this element. And finally, you need to close the browser. So one nice thing about Playwright is that actually the code looks like the activities that you would do as a user. And there is a reason for that. Basically, for this project, we are using Playwright to make screenshots later, but you can do much, much more with Playwright. So actually, you can test if your website is working by simulating the behavior that users would perform on your page. For now, we're just locating the H1 element and printing out the text content of it. Let's give it a spin. Save the file, open the terminal, and now there is an important detail. In one terminal, you need to have the Flask development server running with python-m flask run, and then you need to open a new terminal. And in this terminal, first make sure that you're also in the virtual environment, and then enter the Python REPL by just typing Python. And once you're in the Python REPL, you can import the utils file. Once the utils file is imported, you can call the take screenshot function. Of course, the function doesn't take a screenshot yet, but it should print the text content of h1. If you look at the code above, remember that our take screenshot function has one parameter, URL, and there, paste in the URL as a string, so the take screenshot function has this one argument, which is the address of the server. And once you run the function, there is a bunch of stuff happening in the background. Now Playwright visits the website and tries to wrap the h1 element. And then you should see the text of your h1 element, in this case, the hello string. And if you had both terminals side by side, you also saw that there was actually a request on the left side in the terminal. That's the Flask server responding with the code function and the HTML code of it to the headless browser of Playwright. That's nice. We know that this works, so next is to actually take a screenshot. Currently, you're only getting the content of the H1 element as text. But later, you actually want to have an image of code. So next step is to actually get an image of an element with Playwright. Inside the take screenshot function, replace the line where you're currently calling the print function and passing in the text content of the element with actually taking a screenshot. You do so by calling the screenshot method. The screenshot method returns an image as bytes. So you need to save the byte somewhere, ideally in a file, but for now, let's save it in a variable first. So at this point, you're visiting the website, you're locating the h1 element, and then you're taking a screenshot that you save in a screenshot bytes variable. After that, you close the browser. And that's OK for now. But after closing the browser, you actually want to save the screenshot bytes content in an image file. For this, you're using a context manager again. And for now, you name the screenshot screenshot.png, open it in the right binary mode, using a variable name, for example, img for image, and then inside the context manager, you're writing the screenshot bytes variable into the image file. 
After saving the utils.py file, you need to run the take screenshot function again to save an image file. Now, you could open a Python REPL again, but you can also use the if dunder name equals main idiom in order to run the take screenshot function with our URL when you run the utils.py file directly. So let's do that. Underneath the function, you can write the if condition if dunder name equals the string dunder main, run take screenshot with the URL of our Flask app. So now you can run the utils file directly and see if it takes a screenshot. Python utils.py, and once you hit enter, you see that it works a little bit because it takes a moment until you see your prompt again. And on the left side, you see that there is a screenshot.png file that Playwright created. If everything really worked as expected, the screenshot should contain basically the same content that we would see when we visit the page. So for that, let's first go to the browser again and check how our website looks right now. And then let's open the screenshot. And there you can see basically the content of the h1 element, which is our hello string now as an image. Isn't this cool? Well, I think it is cool, but let's play around with it a little bit if you're not convinced yet. Go to the app.py file and change hello to, for example, an emoji. Save the file and visit the browser again to verify that the emoji is showing. And as you can see, we're still seeing the hello page. So that's good that we checked it because currently our Flask server isn't restarting when we adjust something with the code. So we could stop the server and rerun it like before. And now when you reload the page, you see the emoji, or you can run the server in debug mode, which then automatically restarts the server when you change the code. So let's do that. Stop the server again, and then at dash dash debug at the end of your python-m flask run command. And then you see that debug mode is on. And now if you change something in your app.py file, you see that the server is automatically restarting. And when you go to the browser and reload it, then the updates are already there. And also to be very clear here, you don't have to have the browser open in order to make the screenshot. So if I close the browser and I'm in the app.py file, I can still run the Python util script and it will still take a screenshot of the browser because you're using Playwright in the background and I just had the browser open to verify that everything is looking like I want it to look. Once you run the utils.py file, it takes a moment, it takes a screenshot. Let's see what's the content now. And there you have it, a waving smiley, nice. If you zoom in, you might recognize that for me, the emoji is a bit blurry. This could also be the case for you. Also, currently, we're overwriting the screenshot every time we're running the script. It would be nicer to actually create a collection of screenshots. So the blurriness and overwriting the screenshot is something that we should tackle in the next lesson.